817 is your time right now. Now, Mary, joining me at the round table here. This is a climate story that really has scientists saying, Wow. Wow. Including us too, and I learned some <laughs> right? of the details. So Greenland has experienced a massive amount of ice melt this week. 11 billion tons of ice melted across the country Wednesday, and that was just Wednesday alone. It's the biggest melt of the season. And to put all of that into perspective, a Danish scientist notes that just 1 billion tons of ice loss it's the equivalent to about 400,000 Olympic sized swimming pools. 400,000. Oh Makia. my gosh. That's just hard to even just like wrap your brain imagine. around. Yeah, I know. Imagine how the scientists who actually specialize in that feel about it. They were definitely uh, sounding the alarms on that one. I'm sure. So the big question is what's causing all of this ice to melt in the first place? Well, do you remember we had that heat wave in Europe where we had like the triple digit heat going on there? Yeah, that dome of high pressure has now set up shop over the Greenland area. You can take a look at it right now. Just have a like a demonstration of it. So you can see that's where Greenland is uh, and it, the heat has really been able to make its way over there, set up some high pressure. And so that dome of heat has really, uh, really been able to melt some of that ice. So they've had temperatures 15 to 30 degrees above oh, average, wow. some really high points on the um, area, uh, some really high points there that never even get above freezing or above freezing for 11 hours. So yeah, it's gonna melt. Oh my goodness. So, all right, give us some insight. How does this affect people like you and me? Well, the problem when you start getting that kind of melting is that you get sea level rise. It's one of the contributors to a higher sea level rise. Yeah. And one of the things that we have noted is that, you know, it could lead to more tidal flooding or what we call nuisance flooding, like flooding on just regular sunny day. Like, whoa, where's this water coming from? Yeah. Why are we flooding? We've actually saw a record amount of that happening in D.C. last year. So if you take a look at that, it'll show that for 2018, we had 22 flood days. In 2003, we had only three flood days. You can see that that is starting to already uh, increase there. Yeah. And by 2050, it's projected that we'll have between 35 and 120 flood days. And Makia, when I'm talking about that, I mean Ohio Drive, Haynes Point Loop, mm -hmm. the wharf, you know, the seafood market there, uh, flooding. It's nuisance flooding, but it could be enough to impact. Oh, well, now I can't walk that way because it's flooded or, yeah. you know, I wasn't going to go here, but I guess I can't because there's water there. So it, it gets in the way, but it could get into buildings causing some damage there. And that's just the mm. kind of stuff that uh, we'll continue to see here as a result of that. You know, I think about other places, especially on the eastern shore, like the little town of Crisfield and other places along just the bay and big bodies of water. This sea level rise is, is serious. Well, yeah, and also uh, Annapolis and Baltimore also had record flooding from uh, that same type of flooding that we're talking about. And I tell you that uh, areas such as Florida, Louisiana, they're concerned about it because we're thinking by the year 2100, potentially, uh, mm -hmm. there could be up to uh, three feet of sea level rise along the coast right there. Oh and what they're freaking out about is that you've got properties down there, million dollar properties yeah. in Florida that, you know, could become flooded. Then in some areas, they're worried that it could be uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. 2100, of course, that's far down the line. Hopefully between now and then there could be some mitigation done that could, um, you know, help to ease that and make yeah. that not become a reality. Definitely, because we've seen, especially when Hurricane Sandy hit, there were places like Crisfield that really found it hard to bounce back. I mean, I used well, to report out there 2014. I mean, there were still people struggling, businesses struggling. So this could really have an, an impact on lives. And funny you said hurricane there, because here's the deal. When you have that higher sea level rise, storm surge is the big problem we talk about with hurricanes, right? Pushing that wall of water. Yeah. Well, hey, if I got more water to push, therein lies a problem. So that's another issue that we look at. All right, Mary Marshall, love these explainers, putting it all into perspective. Thank you. <laughs>